If you're stressed out about something, don't you hate it when someone says, don't worry? That's a less than helpful suggestion. I'm really worried about the results of this CAT scan. Well, don't worry about it. Well, geez, thanks. I I feel so much better now. I'm really anxious about what's going to happen with this job. Don't worry. Well, silly me, you're right. I, I don't need to be anxious about losing my job. You're absolutely right. What was I thinking? <laughs> I suppose telling somebody, don't worry, we'll get this together is, is a little bit better, though. You're encouraging them by showing them that they're not in this alone. But even then, sometimes that always doesn't help. We know that worrying doesn't help and that sometimes it could even possibly make the situation a little bit worse. And while we probably know that living in a constant state of worry and anxiety will wear us out in a hurry, unfortunately, it's what we do. I bet this is especially true for over the last couple of months. If you think about all the things that's going on in our world, how can you not be anxious? Our nation especially seems to be sliding headlong into absolute chaos. People are still unemployed, businesses are failing, children are falling behind at school, political bickering fills the airwaves, and then you can add the the struggles with depression and loneliness and isolation and addiction. And then I suppose we could add all the things that we're worried about personally, health concerns, getting older, worrying about the kids, anxious about work or school, worried about friends and worried about not having friends, anxious about tomorrow, next week, next year. I suppose by now you say, okay, pastor, you're making me a little depressed here. Just like slow down there just a little bit. But what would, I, well, what would you say if I said that there's an alternative to all this? Maybe you think you know what I'm going to say and then maybe, you know, maybe you don't know what I'm going to say. But the odds are, you're probably not going to like what I'm going to have to say. And and don't get me wrong, this is is coming from my buddy Paul here, because, you know, me and Paul, we go way back here. Paul says, don't be anxious about anything. Well, that's helpful, Paul. Gee, thanks. I, I, I think I could move on with the rest of my day knowing that you said, don't be anxious. We know it can be said. It's the doing that's hard, though. I won't lie, it's easier said than done, but that's not the end of the story. Listen to what Paul says. He says, the Lord is at hand. Do not be anxious about anything. That's the antidote to your worry and your stress. The only antidote is the Lord. I have a story for you, but it's it's more of, of my testimony that I've shared like a few times in the past, but it's a great example of don't be anxious, even though when I was going through this time, I was plenty anxious, let me tell you. When I was in the Navy, there's a time when I was stuck at the rank of E5 for a long period of time because the percentage of advancing to the next rank was really, really low. The rule was that if you're still at E5 by your 12-year mark, that the Navy would process you out. And I was getting really, really close to that time frame. I was going on deployment soon. My wife and I had done some research about some other programs about that would take prior military just in case I didn't advance to the next rank of V6 in time. Also during that time, I was a lay leader on the ship. So I was leading Bible studies, leading Sunday services, and I was even doing evening prayers. And before we had left for deployment, my wife and I, we prayed for that, over that deployment like we always do. And also definitely prayed that I would make that next rank. A few days before I left, I stopped by the uniform shop and I bought an E6 uniform patch. (laughs) And I took that patch and I put that in my Bible and I prayed over that, trying my best not to worry, you know, still trying to serve the best way I could. And I knew I could trust in God because I knew he had a plan. As we were turning home from deployment and getting ready to pull in, we had an end-of-deployment award uh, ceremony in the back of the ship. 
And my chief told me, hey, you know, you're getting an award. Go ahead and go back there. And I'm thinking like, okay, this is no big deal. It's just, you know, hey, good job. You know, pat on the back type thing. Much to my surprise, my captain had called me up front and automatically advanced me to the rank of E6. If you can imagine how I was feeling inside, but more importantly, how God had provided in a time where I was anxious and worried, not knowing where he was going to lead or what he was going to do. But I knew that he had a plan, and I knew that he would provide. If Paul just said, don't worry, we wouldn't be very encouraged. However, he also explains that we don't need to be anxious because the Lord is at hand. The promised day of Jesus' return gets closer every day, and when he comes back, anything and everything that induces anxious hearts and worried souls will instantly cease to exist. It also means that he's right there with you, walking with you and leading you through your anxiety and your fears and your stress because he promises never to abandon you to your anxieties. We can find comfort in God's promises. Paul says, in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. I think we all know this. I think we also know that sometimes we don't do enough praying. You might wonder, though, why we would, why we would thank God when we're riddled with worry and anxiety. Thanking God for what has happened in the past reminds us that God's compassion and goodness will continue into the future. Just look at Jesus. In the, in the past, God repeatedly promised that a Savior would come. The Savior would give sight to the blind and heal the lepers and preach the good news to everybody. That Savior came, and now you can look to the future realizing that if Jesus came into this world to save us from our sins, we don't have to worry about our future. We can put ourselves in God's hands because he's already given us what is necessary to handle anything that may come up. As Paul says in 1 Corinthians, thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Let's take a look at the condition Paul was in when he was writing Philippians. Paul was in prison during this time. So you can imagine all the conditions and all the things that Paul was going through at this time. And here we are stressed and worried about some of the little things in life sometimes. The main difference between Paul and what we go through, we can find in verse 7. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Paul's peace isn't the relaxed feeling you get when something you were worried about turned out okay. It's the peace of God, a peace he gives you that's so great and so powerful you can't comprehend it, and all you can do is treasure it. This peace gives you contentment and hope even when you're racked with tears of despair or tears of worry. The Lord's peace assures you that he knows what he's doing and that all things will work out. For our good. And this peace assures you that no matter what you're going through, you belong to Christ. The Lord's peace, which surpasses all understanding, guards our hearts and minds by being the lens through which you can look at through the things that worry or frighten you. To have the peace of God dwell in us means that we can give him our anxieties and worries, trusting him to handle all things we worry about that we have absolutely no control over. Now, please don't think I'm saying that we should just get over it, that we should just get over our worries and anxieties. Like, I, I know it's not that easy. What we do know, though, is that God's grace and peace enables us to do all things. I know it doesn't do any good to tell someone, don't worry. And although you think I'd remember that little piece of advice and to stop saying it myself, there will still be times when we say, to other people, don't worry, who will still end up stressed and concerned. Especially when it's a, a medical procedure or a loved one that's not doing so well or a child that is struggling or all the things that are happening in the world right now. But you know, when God says don't worry, it means that his son whose blood flows over us reinforces us against the anxiety and worry that may plague us. The peace of God is about the presence 
and the nearness of the one who is greater than even the most overwhelming circumstances. And you know, I get it. It's, it's hard for us to trust God and just to rest in God's peace. We want to take control of the circumstances. We want to worry and be anxious over the circumstances. As if by being anxious, we're doing something to actually solve the situation. So often we give our anxiety and circumstances to God, and then what do we do? Hey, God, I think I'm going to need those back because I'm not done with those just quite yet. May we be reminded today and every day of the sacrifice Jesus made for us so that we don't have to worry. Let us be reminded of the one who knew no sin, who became sin for us so that we didn't have to worry. We can lay all of our worries, concerns, sadness, and anxiety at his feet because he goes before us. The one who went to the cross as a sacrifice for us so that we can have a relationship with God. He took the punishment we deserve so that we can have eternal life with him. I'm talking about the one whose promises are true. The one who loves us through our pains, through our ups and downs, and especially during our times when we feel unworthy. This is the peace of God that surpasses all understanding. In the name and for the sake of Jesus Christ, amen.